What's going on guys? Uh out to here another video and I want to talk about a post that I saw in a group and it was a group of it group for like guys who are reformed um people who consider themselves calvinist and i not really so much the post itself but the responses that i did get from the post and i just want to kind of say some things to some of my brothers and sisters who may consider themselves to be reformed or calvinist uh, because I, I am seeing a lot of things that are concerning people who consider themselves Calvinist or part of the reform community. Now, I was in this Facebook group, and this group is dedicated to those who are of the reformed faith. And I'm not going to say which one it is, but I saw a post where somebody asked the question. And they asked... How can a person smoke cigars to the glory of God? Now, I don't know if this person was just making a troll post or if they were asking a question, uh, one of those rhetorical questions. Maybe they was responding to someone in the group. Um, So I, I saw the post and it wasn't so much of that. But it was the response that I've seen from a lot of people in that post. And one post that I saw, which has prompted me to do this video, is that um, one guy was basically saying that, well, you know, we have the liberty to do certain things and um, and God has put certain things on this earth for our enjoyment. And, and as long as we're enjoying these things, you know, we should be able to partake in certain things. And, you know, God shouldn't have a problem with us doing things like smoking cigars and stuff like that. Now, it, it really concerned me because I've been a part of this, this, this particular Facebook group for maybe about, I'll probably say at least two years. Um, and I'm, haven't really been active in it. You know, I, I used to post things here and there, but you know, I haven't really been active. And one of the reasons is because I think that a lot of these guys take this whole Christian Liberty thing like way too far. And it seems like that this particular group and not just this group I've seen and I've encountered people who consider themselves to be Calvinists. Um, it seems like that they are more interested in creating a subculture within the Christian faith than actually sticking to the word of God and actually spreading the word of God with the reform theology, you know, and, and really just focusing on getting the gospel out. Now, I'm not saying that all people who are Calvinists or consider themselves to be Calvinists or, or reformed have this type of ideology, but there is a lot of folks that I do see who, who wear, who wears those titles. And it's like, they're more interested in stuff like what kind of, what is their favorite whiskey and, and trying to grow their beards and, um, and, and what is their favorite cigars and, and stuff like that? Their favorite beer. And, and I'm like, this is not what Reformed theology is about. And I don't know where a lot of these guys get this ideology from. But apparently you, you got a lot of these guys who believe that they can almost do anything. And as long as that, that they're enjoying it, they have the liberty to do it. And God is OK with it. Now. Paul did say in the Bible, and I don't have my scriptures to pull up, but Paul did say that, you know, just because something is lawful to me doesn't mean that I have liberty to do it. Now, just because you can smoke a cigar or just because it's legal for you to smoke a cigar and drink whiskey, probably even get drunk. You know, there's no law against that, but 
as Christians, you know, we got to watch our behavior and our characters. You know, I mean, we're, we're not, we just don't, we can't be out here just running amok and doing whatever we want to do. And it seems like that this whole reform theology thing, it's almost like you got two categories of these guys where you got one group of guys who are like me, who are, who, who understand and respect and honor the work that have been done by the reformers. Those who have, who, who have contributed to the reformation, you know, at a time where the world was just upside down and the gospel needed to go out men who put them put their lives on the line and they use their resources and everything to to be able to get the gospel out guys like William Tyndale um you know Martin Luther John Calvin you know these are men who were uh, martyred by the faith and, and heavily persecuted just for making sure that people understood the word of God correctly you know, and, and this is why um, and this is why we respect these men. And this is why, you know, we do hold to a reformed theology, because when we read their writings, their writings align with scripture. Now, of course, there was a couple of things here and there that they did that can be controversial. And I get that. But the overall contribution to the work of God, to the body of Christ, um, the, these men have did a phenomenal job, you know, hands down. Any, you know, there's no argument against that. But I think that there's a lot of these guys who are using that title of Calvinist and who are using that title of reform as a way to push this subculture, which a lot of you guys are just, you talk more about politics and, and preserving uh, American freedoms and 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 uh, um, freedoms and ideologies and you know just it, it's almost like this America first thing and don't get me wrong I love America you know um, I'm a patriot you know I I love America um, I think that we are a great nation and I think that we do have potential and we have done things as a country that has greatly impacted the world. We've changed the world and we've done a lot of good in the world, but don't get it twisted for once. America has a lot of blood on its hands. Hands down. There's a lot of atrocities and there's a lot of evil things and wicked things that have happened under America's watch. So let, let's, let's not get that twisted. Okay. Um, I'm a black man, obviously. We know that the sin of slavery was a very egregious act. So I'm not going to sit here and get on here and pretend that, that well, you know, that was something that happened a long time ago. No, there was, there was a lot of things that happened in this country that um, America has a huge sin debt, right? And I, if you ask me personally, I think that we are leading some of these other nations into sin and perversion, with our actions, but I'm not going to get into that. But I wanted to say that although I understand those things, I still love America and I still think that it's a great country. But I think that some of you guys are putting that over the word of God, because I see a lot of you guys, you know, you. And again, I voted for Donald Trump. <laughs> OK, I voted for Donald Trump. I thought he was a better pan, uh, a better candidate than both Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. Voted for him twice. So you're not getting one of these closet Black Lives Matter guys or anything like that. But there's a time and place for certain things. OK, I've had my time and place where, you know, I have post, posted some political stuff here and there, some inconsistencies with what the left is saying you know, versus the right, whatever. I get it. I understand that. But it seems like that some of you guys are so steeped into American culture, so steeped into your your, your favorite whiskey and your favorite, uh, you know, cigars and stuff like that, that it takes so much away from the gospel. So therefore, when somebody hear the word or hear the name or title Calvinist, 
or when they hear reform theology, they're automatically thinking of white racists, right? They're thinking of some MAGA hat wearing, you know, American flag flying, uh, guys with some aviator glasses, long beers, big cigar hanging out of his mouth. Um, you know, some, some of you guys are out there using bad words, curse words, you know, and these are not things that are becoming of a Christian. It is really not. And the one of the biggest issues that I see as a black guy who holds to a reform, um, who holds to reform theology, you know, who may be considered a Calvinist, and I'm a part of the minority. I mean, you know, there's not many black men who actually subscribe to reform theology. But it becomes difficult for guys like me to have that title and to be able to witness to, to other people. Because the first thing that people say is, you must be brainwashed by some of these white folk. This is slave Christianity. You know, if you believe in the reformers and you have reformed theology and you call yourself Calvinist as a black person, you have been brainwashed by these white folks who are uh, who, who are slave owners and all of this stuff here, you know, but there are a lot of people that do have a reformed theology who do carry themselves in a dignified manner. But what I'm saying is that some of you guys, not all, some of you guys really need to watch the way that you're expressing some of this Christian liberty because I think that some of the stuff is causing some guys and some other people to stumble. You know, I'm seeing guys with no piercing all in their face and the, the, the big plate earrings and, you know, they got the green purple hairs and you know, tattoos all over the place and they're constantly getting, and I mean, it's not like, like they got those things a while ago and then they're trying and then they're, you know, they got saved afterwards. But a lot of these guys are continuing to go and get tattoos and they're, and they're steady trying to look like somebody out in the secular world. You know, we got to be set apart. You know what I'm saying? We can't be just tattooing our bodies all the way up and, you know, and, and we got some long beard and we send that home and pictures of us drinking whiskey. And we got more of that on our Facebook pages than we actually have with us quoting scripture in this context, quoting what the reformers have actually said. Pointing people to Christ, pointing people to the gospel, being able to give a defense for the gospel. So what I'm saying is that, you know, you guys um, just watch your conduct, man. Like, like make it more about the gospel. And some of you may just post a scripture here and there, but you have to ask yourself, look at your social media pages. Do people see more of you than they see of God? Or... You like like what are you really doing? Like like what are you really doing when when you call yourself a Calvinist or you saying that you hold to reform theology? So that's just something to think about. And again, this I mean you know I, I'm not trying to you know throw shade or anything like that, but but I do think that certain things have to be said. But you know anyway, you guys let me know in the comment section section what you uh what would you think? You know as always, um do you think that Reform theology is about expressing our supreme liberty in Christ and we can do whatever we want to do. If we decide that we want to smoke, you know, eight cigars a day, we can do that. And we can drink as much whiskey and scotch and bourbon as all, you know, we can just do whatever we want as long as we do it in the glory of Christ. Or do you happen to believe that? I think that sometimes we really, really have to watch some of our actions, some of the things that we say and that we do, you know, as Christians, period. Don't, don't care if you call yourself Reform or Arminian or Presbyterian or Pentecostal or whatever. We all got to make sure that we keep a certain level of decorum when we are representing Christ, when we are wearing the name Christian. Anyway, guys, uh, you know, as always, like this video, rate it, share it, subscribe. Um, hit that notifications bell and uh, you guys have a blessed day.